Ministers. Alex Stubb, the former Prime Minister of Finland, now Director of the European University Institute. And uh, Enrico Letta, former Italian Prime Minister, and he's now President of the Jacques Delors Institute. He joins me from Rome. Thanks very much for both of you, to both of you for coming on to Euronews now. I want to ask you briefly the same question, so a quick response from both of you. We've now got this recovery package, which uh, um, Ursula von der Leyen is dubbing um, the recovery plan Next Generation EU. The the number of euros involved is mind-boggling, two trillion euros. Is it going to be enough uh, for European countries? And is this the boost that uh, the EU needs? Um, Alex Stubb, first of all. I actually think it's an excellent package. It's very balanced. It's quite ambitious as well. And if we look at the early reactions of the member states, I actually think they're quite positive. Whether this will be enough at the end of the day, no one knows. But I think this is as ambitious as the European Union can get. And I think it's a great job by the European Commission. Enrico Letta, a quick reaction from you to what was uh, said yesterday. I share what Alex just said. I think it's important because it is a way also to link this recovery package to the main missions of the European Commission, the Green New Deal, digitalization, innovation. And I think also it's very important because it's a demonstration of solidarity within the European Union without transfer. It's a solidarity, but for a sort of working process for the future. Now, uh, we've heard much about potential resistance from the so-called famous uh, frugal four countries. Um, Two of those countries are your Nordic neighbours, Alex Stubb. What could you say as a former Prime Minister of Finland to convince the likes of uh, Sweden and Denmark that this is worthwhile? Well, I think, first of all, this should be viewed from a macroeconomic and financial perspective rather than an accounting exercise. And I think both in Denmark and in Sweden, both countries understand that the internal market and their economies are intimately tied with what's going on in Europe. I'll give you an example. Sweden took a different line in fighting the COVID virus, uh, but economically it's pretty much in the same boat. So I understand where they are coming from, but at the end of the day, we're tied to the hip. What happens in Italy, what happens in Spain uh, will have reflections and repercussions in both Denmark and Sweden. And I do think that at the end of the day, they will come on board. Uh, And what happens if they don't come around? Uh, I think they will come around because usually the way in which the European Union works is that you have three phases. Phase number one is a crisis. Phase number two is chaos. And phase number three is a suboptimal solution. So what you hear in the beginning is a very defensive stance from the frugal four, which is understandable. Then they will tweak and change the proposal a little bit and then everyone can come out as having a successful negotiation deal. So they will come aboard. Uh, I'm absolutely sure about that. Enrico Letta, are you, are you as confident as Alex Stubb that the Frugal Four will come on board over this? I think they will be on board. The only problem is if it is necessary to have some sort of opting out or something like that, maybe for the Netherlands, because it seems that their position because of their parliament is so rigid. But I have to say that what is very important today is a big message of trust, of confidence to the rest of the world, but also, first of all, for the uh, European citizens, because recovery is not only a problem of uh, supply chain, it's also a problem of demand. So it is necessary to show uh, trust, confidence and to uh, be able to work in a cohesive way. You've written this week about the uh, struggles that the EU has faced in recent years with the Eurozone crisis, the migration crisis. Um, The pandemic really has further illustrated the EU's weakness. Isn't really this big recovery package just uh, a fig leaf um, to, to cover up the EU's wider problems that are still there? There are many problems. But uh, this crisis was the third one in a row in a decade. And it was absolutely necessary to have a different reaction rather than the two previous crises, the financial crisis and the refugee crisis. And I think uh, this decision, yesterday's decision, is at the level of the whatever it takes that Mario Draghi 
uh, took as main change in the monetary policy eight years ago. It is a turning point. Now, it is very important to be uh, very good in the implementation. Uh, I'm not completely satisfied without seeing the implementation part of the process that is half of the problem. Alex Dubb, a, a couple of years ago, uh, you said in an interview that you were pragmatic and in terms of um, uh, the European Union, you were both pro uh, for more Europe and also for less Europe. If we now project ourselves ahead, looking at the post-pandemic period, uh, how would you develop that argument? Where is there going to be a need for more Europe and where uh, for less? A couple of years ago, I also had a campaign program for Spitzenkandidat, which was called Next Generation Europe. So I'm very glad to see that sort of popping into the program. Uh, I think what's going to happen right now is that we're going to see more Europe in what I would call social, the social sphere. Remember that from 1989, the end of the Cold War and the collapse of communism, the European Union has been a very market oriented project with the four freedoms, free movement of goods, services, labor and money, with very strong competition policy lines and also with very strong uh, regulations and rules on state aid. Now we're seeing a bit of a comeback of the state and there's been a lot of talk about what I call social Europe, but now for real, we see social Europe. If I recall correctly, there's 9.8 billion euros allocated to health issues, which is not really in the European domain. So for the first time, we're seeing the emergence of social Europe, and that's where we're going to see more Europe in the future. And I actually welcome that. Enrico Letta, as far as Italy is concerned, obviously it was the first country to really bear the brunt uh, of this pandemic. Um, it's hopefully going to benefit a lot from this uh, recovery package. Um, but in the longer term, um, despite what it's going to receive, isn't it really still up to Rome to get itself in order uh, on the economic front where uh, there have been severe difficulties in recent years? Yeah, it's absolutely necessary to be able to use all this money in the correct way, in the perfect way. But also it is very important to keep uh, uh, public finances in order. Uh, Italy is able to manage his debt, but this crisis will uh, uh, increase the debt, not only for Italy, but also for the rest of the European countries. So I think it is very important also to uh, have the way to keep finance in order, to use this money uh, to uh, boost growth, to boost digitalization, to have the possibility to help the country to be more modern. So I think it's a great opportunity for Italy, for the Italian leadership, for the Italian entrepreneurs to be more modern, uh, to get the future in a, in a better way. Enrico Letta from Italy, Alexander Stubb from Finland, both former prime ministers of your respective countries. Thanks very much for joining us on Euronews Now.